Hello students, welcome to the session. Today I am going to speak about the retinaculum of the foot. Once we tell the term retinaculum, it means that it is the modification of deep fascia or the thickening of the deep fascia towards the joints. So it is also homologous means you will see the retinaculum of the hand also. So there also it is the modification of the deep fascia or thickening of the deep fascia. So this retinaculum and the foot and the hand prevents the tendons, the long tendons from bow stringing or bowing in front. So it prevents the tendons from bow stringing. So today we'll like we'll discuss about the retinaculum of the foot. First coming to flexor retinaculum of the foot. So attachment of the flexor retinaculum of the foot is upper attachment it is to the medial malleolus of tibia and the fibers pass downwards there to the calcaneus medial tubercle on the calcaneus. So medial malleolus of tibia to the medial tubercle on the calcaneus bone that is the attachment of flexor retinaculum. Okay, so this flexor retinaculum is also called as tarsal tunnel. So what are the structures that are passing beneath the tarsal tunnel or beneath the flexor retinaculum is you can remember by the mnemonic Tom, Dick and Harry. So Tom refers to tibialis posterior. So T refers to tibialis posterior. Then Dick refers to flexor digitorum longus. And then AN refers to artery and nerve of the posterior compartment that is posterior tibial artery and tibial nerve after that comes flexor hallucis longus i repeat again tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus then you have the posterior tibial artery tibial nerve and flexor hallucis longus so these are the structures that are passing beneath the flexor retinaculum so you can also see in this picture the attachment from medial malleolus to the medial tubercle in the calcaneus flexor retinaculum also called as tarsal tunnel. In case of hand there it is called as carpal tunnel there you will see the compression of median nerve in the carpal tunnel syndrome. So similarly here in the tarsal tunnel it is the compression of tibial nerve. So tibial nerve is the one after passing beneath the flexor retinaculum it gives medial and lateral plantar nerves to the sole. So in case of compression of the tibial nerve in the tarsal tunnel it leads to the numbness of the area of distribution of the tibial nerve as plantar nerves that is the area of numbness is seen in the sole of the foot. So same like that of carpal tunnel syndrome where median nerve is compressed and area of numbness is seen on the lateral three and a half fingers. So to tell, I've already told about the tors tarsal tunnel syndrome, tarsal tunnel syndrome where you can see the compression of the tibial nerve beneath the flexor retinaculum of the foot. Next retinaculum that is extensor retinaculum. When coming to extensor retinaculum, it is having two slips like that. Okay, that is superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum. While well, coming to the attachments of superior extensor retinaculum, it is attached from the borders anterior border of fibula to the anterior border of tibia, and the superior extensor retinaculum is above the ankle joint. Okay, and when coming to the inferior extensor retinaculum, it is distal to the ankle joint, and you see this inferior extensor retinaculum in the form of y-shaped band so y-shaped band in the sense it will be having the stem of the y that is attached to the calcaneus bone and once it comes to the dorsum of the foot it splits into upper band and lower band so that upper band is going and attaching to the medial malleolus of tibia whereas the lower band merges with the deep fascia of the sole I repeat again, inferior extensor retinaculum, the stem of that Y is attached laterally to the calcaneus bone, whereas above the dorsum of the foot, it splits into upper band and lower band. Upper band is attached to medial malleolus of tibia, whereas the lower band goes and merges with the deep fascia of the sole. So you can see there how the long tendons from the anterior compartment is passing beneath the extensor retinaculum. So this acts like a tightening modification of deep fascia prevents these tendons from bow stringing. So you can see in the slide also superior extensor retinaculum just like a band whereas inferior extensor retinaculum is seen in a form of y-shaped band and you can also appreciate in the slide that there are some structures that are passing superficial or above the flex uh, i mean the extensor retinaculum that is superficial peroneal nerve what you are seeing there which is the 
nerve of the lateral compartment of the leg after supplying peroneus longus and peroneus brevis it is coming and passing superficially over this extensa retinaculums and going to the major cutaneous innervations on the dorsum of the foot means it becomes cutaneous and supplies major portions in the dorsum of the foot and the other structures passing superficial to the extensor retinaculums are the saphenous veins the long saphenous veins and the short saphenous veins formation is superficial passing superficial to this extensor retinaculums the structures that are passing deep to the retinaculums are the same structures what you are seeing in the anterior compartment of the leg to repeat that again tibialis anterior extensa digitorum longus extensa hallucis longus then peroneus tertius the artery and nerve the compartment is anterior tibial artery and deep peroneal nerve which can also be called as anterior tibial nerve so you can also see here the superior extensa retinaculum and a y shaped splitting the stem of the inferior extensa retinaculum is seen there and you are seeing it splitting in a form of y okay to tell in this picture about the next retinaculum that is peroneal retinaculum coming to the peroneal retinaculum its attachment here is to the lateral malleolus of fibula and going to the lateral tubercles of the calcaneus bone so this is superior peroneal retinaculum and just lower to that you find the inferior peroneal retinaculum so what is the difference what you are seeing here is the tendons of peroneus longus and brevis or fibularis longus and brevis has a common synovial sheath once it is passing beneath the superior peroneal retinaculum and it has a separate synovial sheath that is peroneus longus and brevis is having a separate synovial sheath once it is passing beneath the inferior peroneal retinaculum so that inferior per peroneal retinaculum itself will continue as the stem of the y of inferior extensor retinaculum so the same thing what i have told you can see the superior peroneal retinaculum you can see the inferior peroneal retinaculum with the separate synovial sheaths for peroneus longus and brevis tendons so whatever is marked one there is superior peroneal retinaculum two is inferior peroneal retinaculum which continues whatever is given as three as the stem of the inferior extensor retinaculum applied aspects is the strain of the inferior extensor retinaculum a strain over there due to the sudden load weight or a simple slip fall twisting of the ankle can all lead to strain in the inferior extensor retinaculum just here you can see the superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum in the form of y and also the structures that are passing deep to this extensor retinaculums thank you